guys, it's me, Lisa, and today I thought we would do something a little bit different. I keep telling you I'm going to give you like a little plant tour. I've got some plants. I've got my plant that just came out of the um, ICU <laughs> with the bugs, and then I've got some that I just bought, and I think the best thing to do when you bring your plants home and I, you know, I'm always making sure that my cats won't pay attention to them. So I bring all of my new plants into my study or my office and I kind of get them used to being here. Before I water them, before I fertilize them, before I cut anything off of them, before I do anything, I let them kind of settle a little bit. And I'm so fortunate because I have these three big windows and then we have, you know, the sliding glass doors over here. That is a south facing window, which is so weird to me because the ocean is that way, but it's because the coastline, I just get some good sun. I'm very, very happy about that. And everybody seems to be happy. That's another thing with me. If I find that I'm not doing well with the plant, it doesn't like being here, I will rehome it because I don't want like, a lot of sick plants sitting around. Like I'm not going to just nurse them till they're down to one leaf or no leaf or anything. I will just go ahead and face the fact that they don't like it here and I am not doing the right thing. First of all, I want to remind you, and this little teeny section is sponsored by City Beauty. Today I have it on with a new, not a new lip liner, but one that I haven't worn with this before. It is the Kat Von D Lolita, just the original. And then this is the City Lips in San Diego. And it is my absolute favorite. Now, oh, I forgot to bring my uh, new stuff in here. Hold on just a second. Okay, they sent me my favorites. I'm gonna put them on the windowsill. And my favorites are the Lid Lifting Treatment. I have used this every day since I got it. It is the perfect lid primer. It smooths my lids. I even use it underneath. Today, I used the Tom Ford palette that I told you guys about the other day. Is it Meek Mirage? It's matte, but those same pretty chocolatey chocolate milk colors. And everything just blends out. Ah, dare I say, I like it better than the Laura Mercier buff. It's awesome. I mean, I was kind of surprised because I have had... If you've been here with me, I've had blepharoplasty, so I don't have double or hooded lids because I took care of that, but I used to have them really bad, so I know how that feels. I hope that it works as far as lifting your lids. That part I really don't know about. Let's see, what is it? Lid lifting treatment nourishes and energizes the skin to lift and firm the appearance of saggy eyelids while instantly softening the look of fine lines and wrinkles. I think it does that, especially on my lower lids. So that is one of my all-time favorites. And then Clear, the Clear Gloss. I just opened a new one downstairs and put my old one in my empties. I have gone through probably more of these than any other lip product ever. I mean, I, I can't believe it sometimes because when you have so many products, you never really get to the end of a lot of them. This one, I use all, I use it every day. I put it on every night after I brush my teeth and every morning after I brush my teeth. It's just like part of my routine. It's actually in the drawer with my nighttime stuff with Revitalash and stuff like that. The Multi-Action Sculpting Cream. I have not used this as much lately because I am on the Obagi skincare, but I've gone through pot after pot after pot of this. I think it is an amazing moisturizer for people like me that just want some, I don't know, like not deep, deep, deep moisturizing, but I feel like it moisturizes your skin and kind of tightens it just a little bit. It makes it feel kind of bouncy and it's perfect under makeup. I do think it's, I need to start using it again on my neck because I do really think it helps the appearance of your neck. I could always tell that. And then, of course, you know, San Diego, they're just, 
They're, it's just fabulous. It goes with any lip liner that I put on. Yesterday, I put it on with Rose. It goes with your Mastermind. It goes with Lancome Ideal. Any lip liner that you like, this is going to go with. Now, it looks good without a lip liner, but I'm a lip liner girl. Kind of, you know, takes on that color. I love it. I love it. I love that kind of pearly sheen to it. Some of their other best sellers are Tokyo Kiss and Pink Nude. Now, these thought about wearing one of these today. This is your perfect, that creamy nude, but I really wanted to wear the my true favorite, but I'll wear these coming up soon. So here is your pink nude, and here is your Tokyo Kiss. These are like the perfect, nudey. I always think about these in the winter, like when you're wearing a smoky eye. These are beautiful. Let's do pink nude first. Is so pretty. See how it's not streaky or anything? Oh, they're so good. And this is the Tokyo Kiss. It's a beigeier color, more peachy beige. And I know I have those girls out there that love the same color lip lips that I do. Their whole website is 40% off. So now is the time. Now is the time to try if I were gonna tell you what to try, it would be, first I would probably have to say the clear because that is my every, that's what I use the most because I feel like, I mean, you guys see my lips all the time. They're never chapped or anything. And you know I wear long wearing lipsticks and all kinds of lip products all the time. Hold on. Then I would say my next favorite thing would have to be, oh gosh, the, I, it has to be the San Diego just because that's just been my, go-to for so long, and then the lid lifting primer, and then the sculpting cream is really so good. I'm sure there's plenty of other people out there giving reviews and stuff too. Thank you to City Beauty for sponsoring that part of the video. Please, if you're wanting to try something, now is the time. I will put the link below, and I will get on with the rest of the video now. Okay, first let's start with my sick baby here. This is the plant. And it looks kind of rough right now, but this is the Schefflera umbrella plant that had the bugs. Now, most people, let me put him, put him right here and look under his leaves. Most people said aphids were what he had on him. Where can I put him? But I, I really don't know. I even took the pictures to the plant place. That's not where I got him and asked them and they said aphids or someone said scale. I'm not sure, I'm looking under all the leaves right now. So I got several things to help with this. Let me go get them real quick and show you what I used. So the first thing I did is the leaves that were just, the leaf that they had damaged, whatever kind of bug that was, I removed it. And then there was another leaf that was just covered in them, more so than any of them, and he had to go too. I started out with just good old Dawn dish soap water and just sprayed him down till it was dripping outside on my back porch. So that's the first thing that I did. And I did that probably two or three times until I went to Lowe's and I asked a guy that I talk to all the time there that's in the plant section. He suggested this. It's not in the house plant section, but it says um, use indoors and outdoors. Fills on contact with botanical insecticides. So I came home and sprayed him down with this probably three times or more. Then when I went to the plant place, they told me to use this, which is Triple Action Plus, insecticide, fungicide, miticide. And it has some of the neem oil in it. So I came home and we were on the mend by this time. Huh, I'm looking at these bugs. None of them really look the same as what I had. But so I, sprayed him down and they told me, which many people had told me this, but they told me, spray him down, then take him out in the yard and spray it down with the hose. I had never even used the hose here. I had to like ask John, do we have a hose? 
And so I took him in the backyard and I thought, you know, it sounded brutal to me to like spray it down with the hose, but it wasn't that bad. What I did is I sprayed it down, you know, first on the top and then I rolled him, put him on the ground and rolled him over so that all the undersides of the leaves were showing and I sprayed those down real good and I have not seen any more bugs. Now, he's still not gonna come inside full time. <laughs> I got John to bring him upstairs so I could show you guys, but what I'm going to do is put him out on the back deck because it's going to be warmer the next couple of days and I'm going to keep watching him and make sure that he's okay before I bring him in. But even my parents said they were surprised that I didn't just toss him. No, I kind of felt like a little challenge and even though it really grossed me out because it did, like every time I did that, my head was itching and I washed my hands real good and everything. Oh God, here's the UPS guy. I feel good about it. I feel like, you know, like when you have a sick animal or a sick child or something, you really bond that more, you bond so much more with them. That's how it feels. Okay, so let's go on with the other plants that I have here. On the floor here, yeah, right here is the first, here, let me hold him up. He's worth, he's worth holding up. This is my first ponytail palm which it's not really a palm. It's in the succulent family. And I think these grow just outdoors in Florida. And these are pet safe. This is the one you can see all the leaves are like chewed on where Chanel and Bubba love to chew on him. This one is from my mom. He needs to be sprayed down too. It's hard to clean all these little leaves. Okay, can you still, yeah, you can still see me. This is a, I believe it's called, an, it's an alocasia, which are my favorites. And I believe this one, I didn't realize there was a difference between African black mask and poly, but this one had the African black mask label on it. Oh, let me see, right here, I try to leave the labels in here. Yeah, African, African mask, they're beautiful. These are my favorites. I love a plant that is just different and, you know, has just weird. And that's how this is. Okay, this is a, I think I just grabbed this. Yeah, a golden pothos. I grabbed this at Home, home not Home Goods, Home Depot, even the dish, because look how big that leaf is right there. I want to try to grow one of those huge pothos where the leaves are just as big as your hands. So I grabbed him and after he gets settled and acclimated, I might repot it and put it on a pole. Okay, this is a very young Monstera. I believe I got this from World Market. World Market has been my favorite as far as the plant containers and everything. You can see he's already got his aerial roots going. And they don't, these are fenestrations. They are the holes in the leaves. They don't start producing those until they get a little bit older. So this is, I guess, I don't know, I guess maybe this is the latest leaf. It hasn't put out a new leaf for me yet, but this is kind of like the dormant season. But he seems happy here, right here in this spot. Okay. This one is a, an alocasia and it is the fry deck. And when I got it, it already had this, a few of these come from a place that's outside. It's kind of like a produce stand type place. And uh, most of their plants, if you get them, have a little bit of edge on them, but they have unique ones. So this is a fry deck. And matter of fact, I did, he already had a broken, little leaf. So I am hoping that he will do well and give me another leaf, especially when it gets to be like warmer and growing season. Okay. This is a, oh, I'm not going to, I'm going to murder the name. Refitophora tetrasperma, something like that. And he has given me a new leaf. Where is it? I think it's this one. And this is a climbing plant. And he's one of the first ones I got and he is ready to repot. So I've got my soil and some pots and it just is gonna take just one of those days that I just want to get dirty and do them all at one time. But he's done real well. He seems happy here. Okay, you guys have seen my orchid. 
before. And a lot of you said, you know, when I was talking about they, you know, they bloom for so long and then, you know, you can throw them away or whatever. And so many people said, well, if you take care of them, they'll bloom again. That's just not my thing. I don't want, I don't want plants like lined in the windowsill or a whole area of propagation or, you know, now that I've been watching all these plant videos, I, I don't want to be like that. Same thing with shoes or bags. I don't want just a lot a collection. That's what I'm trying to say. So, I mean, I want to enjoy it while it's here. And then, you know, if someone wants it, I'll give it away, but I'm not interested in just keeping the plant and waiting for it to bloom again. This is my big alocasia poly. So I don't know if the al alocasia poly and the alocasia African mask are the same thing. I just don't know, but this one I've had the longest and he has given me, I think two new leaves since he's been here. I know that one right there in the middle. Let's see, let me hold him. The bottom of this, this is a, that pot from World Market. This is a new leaf. And one thing I want to do is probably, I was gonna hold off because I live in such a humid area anyway, but with the heat and air condition, I think I'm gonna get a humidifier to put in here because it, it can't hurt. And they, a lot of these plants really like the humidity and that helps them like unfurl their new leaves when the humidity is good. So this guy's very happy, Alocasia poly. And you can't, the only way you can propagate these is when they give you those little, they call them pups, then you can separate them. But I really, he's been very rewarding. Okay, so let's start from the back over here. This is a Monstera Peru. This will not have the fenestrations, but this has the most beautiful, big leaves that are have all of this texture, and I love that. You have to forgive my nails. I'm going to get a manicure today because my I cannot handle my cuticles like they can, so I'm gonna go get a manicure. Anyway, look at those leaves. A lot of these plants need to be cleaned. What I usually do, I have the leaf shine, but I don't like to leaf shine all of them. I really like to just use a very wet with maybe the tiniest bit, maybe I'll spray just a little bit of that Dawn water, the tiniest bit of Dawn or something because some of these are dirty because they were outside. So this one could use some cleaning, but, and he's always had a little bit of yellow in his leaves ever since I got him, but he's been doing good. And I think he's got a new leaf coming out. So we'll see, so Monstera Peru. This is usually not my type of, even though it is, let's see, an alocasia high-low beauty. It is an alocasia. I'm not as crazy about thin, fluffy plants. I like a hearty, big, fabulous, sexy leaf. You know, I, I like it to be just, I don't know. I just like thick, cool leaves, but I could not turn away this variegation. And I've got a new leaf coming. So, and he probably could stand to be in a different pot. I don't think this one's showing him off good enough, but I just keep bringing home cool pots and finding out who can fit and who, but I just think he's so pretty. Okay, this one. This one has been, oh, he's such a, he's such a lover. This is my new leaf here. And he is a silver sword philodendron. I paid 80 bucks for him which you can get them less than that. That was just me being new and excited. Matter of fact, I think what I always do is have cash on me and I think I ended up getting him less than that by the time I bought everything. Look at that beautiful, here I'm gonna hold him, that beautiful color. And just so, I don't know, just so fabulous. He's so in your face and, you know, awesome and these, plants too. This one and my one downstairs, philodendrons. what I notice is they do that, is it called gutation or gutation, where in the mornings they will have like water drops on their leaves, especially if you've just watered them and it's so cool, especially like the new leaf will have a drop of water on it where they're processing the water and getting rid of the excess. So love him. And I specifically chose to put something so aggressive looking and pointed and 
dragon-like in this pretty pot. I just think that's a cool, cool look. Okay, this one doesn't fit in here good. I've just got him in here, but this is the Mikan. I believe it's a Mikan philodendron. This I was like, big deal. I would see people, you know, talk about these and I was like, okay, what is it? But the leaves are fuzzy. They're like velvety and it's just really, really pretty. So I eventually want to get it in a bigger pot. I want to put a lot of these in the clay pots. They're my favorite. I was letting him kind of get used to being here and letting him chill for a little while. And then I will give him a pole to climb. But I have enjoyed, you know, watching it. And just the leaves are much prettier than I thought when I saw it in other videos. Okay, this little baby is an Alocasia Maharani. I've got another one in there. I've got two of them. And I eventually want to probably pot them together. If, if I like something, a lot of times I'll get two of them. And my intentions are to put them in a bigger pot. But... As long as they're doing good, I hate to interrupt them. And this one just gave me this new leaf. But these have, look at the texture. Let me turn towards the sun. Look at the texture in those leaves. Just gorgeous. Now, this is one, see, he could stand, where is it? He's got a dirty leaf, a really dirty leaf on him somewhere. Okay, maybe it's not this one. But you have to, oh, here's a little bit on that one. You have to get a really, when the lady at the plant place told me to use a sock to get in there and clean it. But look at that new leaf. Isn't he cute? So I've really enjoyed this. And the way I have been watering them is taking them to the sink. What, you know, watering them lightly. And when I say that, like not a bunch of pressure, just barely. Like you always wonder why people are using those little watering cans with that little baby spout. It's because you want to water them slowly and let it really go through the soil until you feel it coming out of the bottom. Then I usually drain them off, and like this one, I've got in here for now. But he'll go into a, a fabulous pot soon. I actually bought this at Home Depot. I think I'm gonna put two alocasias in here. This does have a hole and like a built-in tray, but I won't depend on that because to me, you know, I kind of relate it to goldfish or beta and fish. You know how, like, you get them and, like, if the children always want to feed them. They always want to feed them and feed them and feed them. People want to clean their tanks all the time. The reason my fish, I had a beta live for, I think his name was Spider-Man. It was either Spider-Man or Superman. He lived for years and it was because we didn't overfeed him and I didn't over clean his tank. You want to just kind of leave him alone a little bit and just, you know, do what they need and nothing more. What I was getting to is root rot is the biggest killer and that is from watering them too much and from them sitting in the water. So you risk that if you don't have a well, well, well draining pot. So I just do mine a few at a time I pick them up and if they feel like they need watering, I just do it, but I enjoy it. That's why I'm not gonna get a whole lot more because it will get overwhelming. Okay, this is another plant I thought, okay, big deal, what the heck. But when I got around it and felt it, I think it's the silver silver something skindapsis, the leaves feel like rubber. They have the coolest texture. He's putting out some new shoots for me and so I just wanted to see how he does here and see how I enjoy him. This is a little baby alocasia. He is the alocasia bambino and his little leaves are small. He will stay small. I don't typically like small, I don't like fluffy plants and I typically don't like little small plants like if I read on the tag that he's perfect for your desk or something like that, I want to see something grow. You know what I mean? I don't mind starting out small, but I want to see it grow. This, I don't mind because he's so good looking anyway. This is kind of like the real good looking guy that's not as tall as you would really go out with, but he's got other things. He's got swag that makes up for it. He's got swag, love him, so cute. Okay. And then this is alocasia. Yeah, I've got another one of him in here. 
uh, Longiloba. I think, are they called long boys? I don't know, but I've got a new leaf coming here. And I love how they're just like faces to me. They're just so happy. And, you know, I come in here and I look at them and I try to breathe on them a little bit because they love the carbon dioxide. And all of these plants really are so good for the air too. They're just, I don't know, there's just something good about taking care of something. Okay, this is a purple sword alocasia. He has lost, I think, one to two little leaves since I got him, but he was kind of sick when I got him. You can see there's like weeds growing in here and everything, um, but he he's going to try to make it. I'm trying to take care of him, and we'll see how he does. But I won't, if he ends up losing another leaf or something, I will probably just maybe, I don't know, I probably won't get rid of him. He'll probably do better when I can get him some more sun and the heat or whatever. But anyway, he's probably in too big of a pot for one thing. This is a big pot for this little plant. And then this is something I never thought I would get. Just a, I think it's just the heart-shaped philodendron. I never really liked plants like this, but like kind of like with the um, pothos, I feel like a challenge. I want to try to give them such a good place to live that they give me those great big leaves. So that's my challenge. Okay, so let me take you in here. So over here, this guy was on the back porch. And I will say that I, that is something I did not take into consideration when I was getting all these plants is the fact that I had to bring them in. <laughs> so we had him on the back porch and we had two more huge ponytail palms, that's what it is, on the front porch. And so we had to bring them all in when it got below 50. And he's fine, he can stay up here. And the two downstairs, I don't know what we're gonna do because I don't want them where they are, but we will fix a good place in the garage for them. Okay, this is very similar to my philodendron that I've had since I was, you know, 25 or probably earlier than that, 24, 23. And I saw this one and got it. This is a lickety split philodendron. He has very deep lines. So that's what makes him different than others. It's just how deep his little finger lines are. And then this fabulous creature. Here is my Monstera Deliciosa. And he has, he was outside too and already had like some weather, but he, I think this, no, not that one. This is my new leaf here. But as they get bigger, that's when they get these deep fenestrations. And like, I really should take off this. This is a sad leaf. I might prune this off and I just love it. I have to say, this is probably my favorite. The Monstera and the Alocasius are my favorite. Oh, and I like him too. I just like the tropical, big, hearty, lush, sexy plants. I don't like little things. I just don't want lots of little things sitting around. I just like the big, I guess, big statement pieces. And so I really need to clean him up too. I've been looking at all of their leaves make sure nobody has anything crazy on them. And this one was actually beside the plant, the chef Lara, and it really scared me, but he hasn't gotten anything yet. And what was that else? Oh, the fenestrations. I've heard that they are for, of course, they're, everything is for survival. You would be surprised at plants and how bad they want to thrive and survive and the things that they have to do that with. And part of that, is these fenestrations. These actually climb up big trees and they. this is for the wind, the wind and the storms. And then someone also mentioned that it's to let sun go through to get to the lower plants because it's all a system. You know, there's even in the rainforest and in the jungles and everywhere, there's, you know, there's plants that are high up, there's plants in the middle and there's plants down low. And God has made it where it all works together. So I really love him so much, and I hope he stays with me. And I probably do really need to cut this one off and he would do better. But like I said, it's not really the thriving growing season right now. The spring, I will be glad to probably take some of them out and let them get some real 
good humidity and maybe rotate them out. So that is it for my office and my study. I do have many more out here. I, I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, my credenza finally made it. It's a little dirty, like not stained dirty, like dusty dirty, where you can see like fingerprint, not fingerprints, but you can see like some marks in the top. I'm gonna to clean it off with the magic eraser and I think it'll be fine at this point. I'm gonna put stuff on the top of it anyway. I can't wait. John's actually working on that wall that it's going on. So I'll show you all of that. Probably not tomorrow, even though I will do my video probably up here tomorrow, but maybe I'll show you everything next week. Yeah, I hope that was fun. And I hope that you will take advantage of the City Beauty sale and enjoy your gloss and your lid lifter and everything else. And I just want to thank you for being here. I really appreciate you guys. It's so nice to have this many people here to talk to and to think about and to have so much in common with. And I just really appreciate it. So thank you for watching and subscribing and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. I didn't even think about my outfit of the day because I'm just assuming that you watched yesterday's video, but just in case you didn't, I'm wearing the frame blouse from Oliver that I showed you in my try on haul along with the jeans. Oh my gosh, I really like these. And then I've got on just my Bottega mules and that's it. So thanks for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.